passive income, buying a business is a bad idea. But if you're looking to become wealthy, it's a great idea, and here's why. I'm going to run through the numbers. This is a typical... Look, look here's, here's something to think about. Here's something to think about. The average business from startup to two million, two million in sales, two million in turnover, pounds, euros, dollars, it doesn't matter. Ninety-five percent of all businesses never get to two million. Furthermore, the first five years is like the critical time. Well, if most businesses never get to two million and the first five years is the most critical time, my thought is, why don't we skip that part? Let's just skip it. We don't have to go through this brain damage. We can skip this whole part and start right here. What a good idea, and that's what I've been doing. I don't buy big, big businesses. I have before, but I don't do that really anymore. I kind of like buying smaller kinds of businesses. And the reason is because I have less bureaucracy, and I like the, the ability to be able to push a lever and watch the thing go whatever direction I want it to go. Big businesses are a little bit harder and more complex to fly. Let me give you an, an example of a typical, this is very typical, and I've got a bunch of people that have done this. A business is doing a million nine hundred thousand of sales, of turnover. They're eventive, which you all got, everybody in here knows what it is, right? Anybody going, I wonder what a bit is? <laughs> now, you already know that. So their, their operating income is 550. This would be typical. The average business that sells, and this works in the UK, it works in Europe, it works in Australia, it works in New Zealand, it works in the US. The typical business that sells, sells for a multiple of 2.8 times EBITDA. That's average. Average multiple that it sells for is 2.8 times. Well, I said, let's take EBITDA and multiply it times three. So that's a purchase price of a million six hundred and fifty thousand pounds or euros. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, well, Keith, this is a great idea. I don't have a million six hundred and fifty thousand pounds. I know. Wait a second. Of this million six fifty, the seller, the average seller, the average seller will carry about 50 to 70 percent of the purchase price. They know they're not going to receive cash when they sell the business. So about, in this instance, I used a million dollars as the seller note. So the seller is selling for a million six fifty. Of that, they're going to carry a note for about eight years and eight percent. The bank, now this is harder today than it used to be with the banking situation, but typically when you buy a business, there's some assets that the business owns that you're able to take to the bank. If there's not, then part of this bank financing gets rolled into the seller. So the seller just gets a little bit bigger. So the bank typically would, would finance 350, the seller is going to finance a million. That means you're 300,000 short. I already know what you're thinking. Keith, I don't have 300,000. I know. Let me ask you a question. Is there anybody in this room who has some, in, some money they'd like to invest today? you got investment capital and you'd like to earn 20% annual annual cash on cash return. Would anybody like to earn it? All right, look around the room. Look around the room. Good, I just found your partners. <laughs> I did. I did because you need 300000 of equity. Of that, 200000 easily can come from other people and they're going to earn a 20% annual return. They're not going to be your partner. You're not going to, they're not going to be your partner. You don't get to make 20% and own 50% of the deal. You get to earn 20%. So now, how much money do you need? Well, under this example, it's 100000 Suppose you say to me, Keith, I don't have 100000 All I've got is 50000 That's okay. Your partner's going to put up 250 and you're going to put up 50. I've literally seen people do this exact same deal and put in as little as 10, 15, 20,000 pounds or euros or dollars of their own money. It doesn't take a lot of money. So let's see what the math is when we get all done. The math is this million right here is going to cost 170,000 a year for the next eight years. This 350 right here, 8% of six years, is going to cost 75,000 a year for the next eight years. 
this 20% or 40,000 per year is as long as you keep these guys in the deal. So let's add this up. I got 550 of profits that are available to be spent on this financing. If you take 550 minus 170 minus 75 minus 40, what you're left over with is 265,000 a year. 265 a year. How much did you invest? 100. You invested 100. And what you're able to produce is 265 a year. Unlike real estate where you got to go out and do a new deal every year, every day to make money, this one just sits here and grinds out cash. If, if you run it, now if you try to get passive and be on it and leave it and systematize it, you're going to have some problems. But if you dig in and say, you know what, I'm going to grow this thing, I'm going to be engaged, involved, then these numbers are real. At the end, if you say to yourself, here's where it gets kind of interesting, if you say to yourself, you know what, I'm willing to live off of 150 a year, and that other 115 that the thing is making, I'm going to throw it at the debt. Here's what this thing looks like at the end of five years. At the end of five years, what this thing looks like is this. At the end of five years, your investment is 100. Your return on your investment is 150 a year for the first five years. At the end of five years, in the sixth year, if you take that extra 115 and throw it at the debt, of course, you know, if you grow it, it could even be better than this. At the end of five years, your annual, your annual earnings from owning this business will be 550,000 a year. That makes the assumption you don't grow it. And you will have an asset that if you wanted to sell it for three times earnings is worth a million six hundred and fifty thousand. There's no debt. There's no debt at the end of five years. Now it's not passive and it's not for everybody. Now my question that I always ask is how many how many businesses, how many assets do you need to own, honestly, that are throwing off five hundred and fifty thousand a year? that you could sell for a million, how many of those do you need on? The answer would be one. You just got to do this one time. And the reality is, once you learn how to do it, if you wanted to, once you learn how to do it and get good at it, there's a way to do it multiple times, which is what I've done over the years. And I haven't, I'm not saying every time I've done it, it's been an outrageous success. But I haven't done this and lost money. And the key is learning how to spot them, how to, how to evaluate them, how to Talk to the seller, how to find out what, where the seller is playing and hide the weenie with you, which, you know, those little sellers are big fat liars, thieves, and crooks, right? How to find the broker to help you find the deal, how to finance them, how to figure out how much they're worth, how to put a value on them. All that stuff is taught during this practice. You'll wind up leaving with a